Good morning, guys. I want to talk about how you can exploit the media. Let's say you're a young upstart entrepreneur with a new app or software to huck to a consumer. Or maybe you're an artist, the, your latest canvas, fight the patriarchy 2019. <laughs> Let's just say you have a message that you want to get out to the audience. How can you do it? Well, you can do it by exploiting inherent weaknesses in media's infrastructure. And the Jeffrey Epstein case is actually a good example of this. So quite a few media publishers released content, published articles on Jeffrey Epstein, even after he'd been convicted in 2008. In fact, the National Review, Huffington Post, and Forbes, which shows you it's not really a political thing. It's not like liberal magazines are much more loose with their editorial board or conservative mag. Uh, you know, it varies. Regardless, these three, for Forbes, National Review, and Huffington Post, all published content that was favorable to Epstein, that kind of rehabilitated his reputation after his conviction. But they were all written by contributing writers. And a contributing writer is ostensibly when a media platform or publisher, publisher is just a fancy word for company, when a media company opens their website for writers of, you know, not employed by the company to contribute material to them. And often that means there's not very much oversight. There's not really a head editor or a copy checker. People just write up and can hit some submit on the website. And Forbes allowed this, Huffington Post allowed this, BuzzFeed allowed this, National Review has allowed this. And Epstein exploited this, for instance. He realized he could get articles about him that would reflect positively. So if somebody searched his name, oh, they see this Forbes article about Jeffrey Epstein. Now, what about you though? You say like, how can I become a contributing writer? Well, there's a couple ways. One, First, you got to find a site that accepts, you know, contributing writers. Sometimes it's just signing up and, you know, hitting publish on whatever you want on their CMS. Now, this has gone away lately as <laughs> digital media companies have realized when they just allow anybody to publish on their website, uh, they kind of get a bad reputation. See Gawker and like BuzzFeed for a while. But the way you can do it is one, media publishers will open themselves up to contributors or close themselves down to contributors based on how much revenue they need to generate in a given year or quarter, or if they need to sell themselves, like the company needs to sell themselves to another company, they need to get acquired. And a good way of juicing up your revenue numbers of, as a company or juicing up your you know, daily unique visitors or viewers is to allow contributing content because suddenly you get an influx volume of, of content. And so watch for when a media company is getting acquired or you know, down in the dumps a little bit and needs to get those numbers up, sometimes they'll open themselves up for contributing content. And that's when you strike. You go in there and you start writing up articles on that app or that piece of art that you wanna sell or whatever it's a social media campaign you're launching. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. You can get even more sneaky. The second option, which is an option that Neiman Labs discovered that Jeffrey Epstein employed, although you could do it as well. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying it is an option is that Forbes had about 2,000 approved contributing writers at, at its time when it was allowing people to submit work to its sites that weren't actually employed by the company. They had about 2,000 people that they had quote vetted, whatever that means, that they would you know just publish onto their site. And Jeffrey Epstein figured out, well, if I just pay one of these contributing writers to publish under their name, I can get whatever I want written and published by Forbes. So. Jeffrey Epstein simply paid $600 to one of the approved contributing writers. The contributing writer took the, the copy, the, just the article that they wanted published, and sent it to Forbes, hit submit, and it was up on the Forbes website. And it was a pretty trash article too. It was not very spelled correctly. Nonetheless, you basically just bought your way in, into a, a paper on a reputable news site. So another option is always just tracking down who the contributing writers are that are approved on you know, Forbes or Vice or Huffington Post or whatever digital media outlet de jure is allowing contributing writers, reaching out to the contributing writers specifically and being like, hey, I'd love to give you a free trial of my app or I'd love to you know, maybe paint you a free canvas of uh, you know, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, whoever you're into, or uh, hey, maybe I'd, you just like a check. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, why don't you publish this for me? Now, is this basically bribery? Probably, yeah. But it's a weakness in the infrastructure of media and it's how you can exploit it. Food for thought, because it's definitely been exploited in the past for nefarious reasons. And that it also goes to show that a lot of the content sometimes 
look at the byline. Look who's writing what piece of content you're consuming because it's not always by people that are directly employed by the editorial board of a newsroom. It could be the actual reporter or it could be just a writer who is employed by the newsroom, which is different than a reporter and held to different editorial standards. It could be one of the branded content team that's you know gotten a sponsored content from American Express and is writing it to somehow slip in <laughs> some American Express reference. Or it could be a contributing writer. And all these various different bylines can mean different editorial standards that they're each held to when they publish a, publish a piece of content on that, that media outlet. Anyway, that's a way you can exploit uh, the media because uh, sure, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. The media will probably exploit you if they could, if you're ever in the, the eye of Sauron. <laughs> so there you go. Like, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.